the Board Game Captain. I'm Lynn. And today we're going to be reviewing and talking about Exit the Game Theft on the Mississippi. So, um, before we get started though, I just want to say I'm wearing one of our shirts from our merch shop over at our Teespring store where we have tons of cool gamer gear. This one says, I drink and I game, it's what I do. And we have tons more as well as mugs and other things all for sale over at our Teespring store. There's a link in the description down below. And a link, there'll also be a link at the end of this video. And if you'd like to support the channel and join our Patreon, there's also a link down below. You can get access, early access to videos, access to exclusive giveaways, and even the ability to request uh, classic game reviews from us here on the Board Game Captain. So check that out. There is a link down below. So first thing I want to do with this uh, review here is thank Thames and Cosmos for sending us this review copy of Theft on the Mississippi from their Exit the Game line. So, uh, this game was designed by Inca and Marcus Brand and Ralph Querforth. I think that's how it's pronounced. I'm going to show you how it's spelt so that you guys can correct me pronunciation-wise if I have uh, butchered his name. I hope I have not. Um, now, this game is for one to four players, ages 12 and up, and it says one to two hours of play. Mm -hmm. So, we... Um, Let's start there. Now, we played this at two players, uh, yes. as we've have been having to do because of the... This we're, this is being filmed right in the middle of the... Um, the apocalypse. <laughs> you, you, you know what's going on. We're not going to mention too much. But uh, because of that, our game nights have been Lynn and I. Uh, we haven't been able to have anybody over. So everything's been two players. But actually, I think I would recommend you do three or four with this, especially because there were some, some challenging puzzles in here that a variety of viewpoints might be beneficial mm -hmm. for. So would you agree to that? Yes. It was doable at two. We did it at two. We got through it at two. But we did, uh, on multiple puzzles, feel like we would have benefited from having a third or even fourth person. Mm -hmm. um, now, the ages 12 and up, I think, is fine? Yeah. I mean, I, yeah, it's, it's fairly easy the, to understand the, the game. Yeah, the story, I think they rate that more um, when there's stuff in the story that's objectionable yeah because generally the rules I, of the exit the games are fairly easy yeah i mean it's just it's a mystery a, some dude had some documents stolen and you're trying to figure out who stole them it's not like a murder or no anything. no nothing like that and then um it says one to two hours we went a little over on this one because we we did find some of the puzzles a bit challenging we went about two and a half hours uh, probably would have gone quicker if we had more players. I know that that usually works the opposite way around, but in, in these real time uh, escape room games, it's actually um, beneficial and yeah. faster. Because there's usually someone who knows how to solve a puzzle immediately. Yeah. You know, and like there yeah. there were multiple puzzles where they were challenging for both of us. Yes. Where we were just like staring at the paper. Yeah, we're like, what are we <laughs> getting wrong? <laughs> Yeah, there, there there was one that like we you, we just couldn't figure it out and had to, yeah had to go to, through the clues anyway, which again let me say now in regard to the rule system for exit the game, I mean so your setup is you shuffle up the the clue deck the hint decks you don't shuffle them uh, oh excuse me yes you just place out all the clue decks in the right order you place out yeah you don't shuffle anything you put uh, you do not shuffle anything you place out all the decks there's a lot of decks of cards. And the way they do hints and the way they also do clues for when you're stuck on a particular puzzle in this is really great because there's three clues for any puzzle. The first clue just gives you, the, you know, how to get started. The second clue gives you how you kind of do it a little bit. And then the third clue will give you how you fully solve it and the, what the solution is if you weren't able to get through it yourself. So I really like that they do that. Um, now this comes with a book called the log book for the River Queen 1872. It comes, of course, with the rule book. And this one had, which I don't think I'm giving anything away with, with this component. Yeah, because uh, we don't alter this at any point. Hmm. You just put stuff on it. So it has this awesome, awesome room map because this guy had something stolen from him over here and whoever stole it was sitting right behind him. And you have to figure out, this is one of the more interesting things I've seen in an exit the game because I've never seen them do something like this. This really felt to me like this this part of the game differed from the other exit the games more than I've ever seen them do. Mm -hmm. 
because you you in addition to solving the puzzles the purpose of solving the puzzles was to solve the grand puzzle of who was sitting in this chair at the time that the theft went on because they they were the thief mm -hmm. um and uh no spoilers i will not give spoilers but you can't trust everyone to tell the truth <laughs> I, I just you know that's not a spoiler i mean you know the thief would lie to you um and of course the always awesome wheel that they use in these exit the games because the basic thing is almost every puzzle is you're looking for a set of numbers though in this case it could also be a set of colors or in at least one case numbers and colors mm -hmm. in combination to to line them up and when you line them up the little window will tell you what card you need to draw so like here we go in this case i would draw the 19 and then that 19 will direct you to another card based on which puzzle you're trying to solve which will then either tell you if you have <laughs> succeeded or if you have gotten the wrong answer and need to go back and rethink your strategy of what you are doing so yeah the eggs at the game mechanics are mostly the same except for the big room thing which i did want to draw attention to that because the whole thing with the room i thought was freaking awesome i well, it was a good visual representation whenever someone was like oh i was in the lounge oh or put like, them in the lounge yeah we just that and they had a little a little they had these little cutouts for all the, yeah. all the people so you can put them where they they said they were but the thing is i mean it i really liked it because while we've, we've often said that every one of these is just a, a a module for the same game system this one felt the most different to me it's still a module for the same game system but having those uh, plus those extra cards for the the suspect cards because mm -hmm. you're actually solving a criminal mystery I thought made this stand out significantly from the other exit the games yeah you get access to a lot more things in the beginning yes because you get you have four suspects and you can read all their cards you you don't have the ability to solve all their riddles not right away um yeah. But you have access to four suspects. You can look at the entire logbook, which normally there's like, stop, don't turn the page, you know? Yeah, but you can page back and forth as much as you want in yeah, this version. Yeah, so you, you have to basically figure out, using what you start with, what you can... Um, Who you have the most clues for. Yeah, what, what, you, can, what you can solve. It's not, uh, it's not as linear as the other ones because there were some, there were some puzzles where we were getting clues for them piece by piece and we were like do we have enough to solve this i don't know <laughs> they, so a little of that can sometimes see i think there's a there's a very fine line because we had a similar situation with another escape room game that i'm not gonna bother mentioning now because it's not important to this review but with another escape room game that we had rated negatively where they did a similar thing but in that one it was frustrating and in this one it was really cool like i i don't i i, I don't even know why it was better in this one it just it, it didn't i didn't find it frustrating i liked it. i was like oh okay we got another part of that one i don't think we have enough for that one and then like we, we would put that one off to the side and we'd just kind of <clears throat> move on and and do ones we had more clues for yeah i think it i don't know if it's the right word i think it was was more intuitive mm, yes yes how um you know you just like you had you know two or three cards in front of you and they have the symbol on them so you know they're for this certain puzzle but you just like had a feeling that i think we need something more right yeah you know, where it I, made sense yeah and also the the puzzles in this so the the, the like there were there were several that we did need with just the two of us to use some hints on however every one of them once we got it or in in one case we actually went all the way through to the end and, and had to get the solution all of them were still logical and intuitive none of them were ones where we were like oh that was lame no all of them we got to the end and we're like oh what were we thinking of course it's this and and the ones that we figured out and all the the most important ones especially the end ones we figured out on our own mm -hmm. they were crazy rewarding i mean i'm i'm sure it's just it for me at least it seemed like it got easier as we went along, but I'm sure it was just like the puzzles that I'm better at were towards the end. Well, also, you know? I think I think we were starting to get into the groove of it after a couple of puzzles, of because I think we were starting to remember what sort of stuff we should be looking for and what sort of stuff we should be doing. And once we got into the groove of it, it got easier because we got into like a rhythm. 
So so that that helped. Mm -hmm. But also just in general, because like, yeah, we got stuck on a couple early. It was like the second and third puzzle we got stuck on a bit. Mm -hmm. But then once we got past that, we like started rocketing ahead. Overall, I think, spoiler alert for my rating, <laughs> um, I think this is my favorite exit the game I've played so far. I really liked this one. The the eighteen hundreds theme of steamboats on the Mississippi. The it just needs vampires. And all right, and that would. <laughs> <laughs> uh, bonus points if you can comment down below if you know what George R R Martin novel Lynn just referenced. You can just go to Wikipedia and look <laughs> well, it up. So, someone's gonna comment it down below. <laughs> okay, so. The Steamboats in the Mississippi theme was great. It was awesome. The mystery theme and the way they worked the mystery into this was seamless and awesome. I really liked the mystery theme. I really liked eliminating suspects. Uh, use the puzzles to figure out where people were so you could be like, okay, well, it's not them. It's not them. You know, it's down to these two. It's one of them. And then you get the final clues and you're like, ooh, I know who it is. I really liked that. Mm -hmm. um, they kept it lighthearted. Um... One minor downside, and this is pretty minor because of how much I enjoyed this game. There wasn't a prize in this one. I really like the ones where they have the funny little prizes. Uh, a lot of the eggs at the games have mm -hmm. funny little prizes. Man. There was no funny little prize on this one. I was one. trying to think of an appropriate prize because they all like relate back to the game somehow. They could have just had like a card with a picture of a steamboat on it. I would have put it on the fridge. <laughs> <laughs> that would have been fine. But, you know, that's a very... Considering how awesome this particular module was, the theft on the Mississippi, how much I enjoyed it, that is a very, very minor gripe. Uh, do you have any gripes with this one? Um... No? Not really. Just, I mean, it was it was more difficult, but it, I mean, it was, that's not really something to complain about. It's, I mean, it's level it, three or whatever. Yeah, it's level so. three. It is meant to be more challenging. Yeah. Um, I felt it lived up to that. It was a challenge, but overall, I, I we we solved more of the puzzles. It didn't. It it didn't um, feel like it took us that long to play. So because we were having fun. Yeah. And it was it was really good. We laughed a lot. There were a lot of we did a lot of joking around while doing this one, which I love the ones where they keep it lighthearted, where you can laugh, you can joke around and really just enjoy yourself and enjoy the experience. And this was one that I think very much succeeded at that because we we were laughing a lot and doing a lot of joking during the puzzles. There was uh there was like one minor exception where there was a puzzle where we were getting frustrated, but then we just looked at the we're like let's do the clues and we did the clues and we moved on and we got right back into the lighthearted fun and laughed with the next puzzle. So overall I thought this was Excellent. Um, okay. Do you want to rate it first or select? You can go. Okay. So, this edges out my other favorites in the Eggs of the Game series so far with an 8.5. 8.5 stars out of 10 because I thought this was thoroughly enjoyable, properly challenging, great puzzles, wonderful additions of the mystery and the big map where you, you have to lay out the characters and there's more clues on the map not giving anything away but overall i thought this was um one of the well actually i thought this was the best implementation of the exit the game system i have played yet i really enjoyed this one um and of course my downside for all of these is unfortunately you can only play any of them once. Oh, I thought it was going to be that you didn't get a prize, and I was like, for all of them. <laughs> no, no, the, the, the prize is a very minor grade. Right. The only downside I ever have with these, really, in totality, is that you can only ever play them once. Uh, because, like, I feel like I would want to forget and play it again, but you'd have to buy another copy. Yeah. But other than that, yeah, this is great. 8.5 stars out of 10 for me. I'm going to give it an 8. Okay, so you're still really up there. Yeah, um, it's it's because it um, it brought some new stuff to the experience. We had the like, the colors on the wheel instead of yeah, the numbers. Yeah, I like the colors. I like the colors. And I mean, there's always um, I don't know. There's always some new puzzles that are just fun to do. So I mean, as an eight, that's as, I think that's tied with your highest of the eggs of the game. So you did quite enjoy this. Yeah. One. All right, so there you have it. Um, that's two thumbs way up because anything eight or above is really high. So that is two thumbs way up for Theft on the Mississippi. We can thoroughly enjoy this to you, especially if you are a fan. Enjoy this to you? 
recommend. recommend. <laughs> we definitely enjoyed it, and we can definitely recommend it to you. And I'm definitely going to leave that in because we're all human. Now, here's the thing. If you like escape room games and you are a fan of, like, classic old-school mysteries, like, um, who, what's the, what, who's the one who did all the Poirot mysteries? Um, Agatha Christie. Is that her? Yeah. Okay, so you're like those kind of mysteries because this felt like that to me. It really felt like those 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 old you know Detective Poirot TV movies that I used to watch as a kid. So it felt it felt like those to me. Um, and also, if you're a fan of the like you know the mid 1800s time period when the the steamboat uh, passenger steamboats were going up and down the Mississippi, it was a very small time period in history, but a very interesting one. Um, all of that together made a very enjoyable experience for us. And this was a really cool game. And we can definitely recommend it. I mean, we both really like this one. So there you have it. You've had, if you have any questions, comments, or concerns on either this video or on Exit the Game Theft on the Mississippi, feel free to put them in the comments down below. And if you enjoyed this video and you'd like to see us do more, be sure to give it a like. Share it on all forms of social media. And if you haven't already, please subscribe to the Board Game Captain. It's Captain spelled with a K on YouTube. And until next time, game, game on. on.